All right, let's play a game of spot the fake guru. Is it A, Mr. Organic? Is it B, Fresh and Fit? Is it C, Michael Sheet? Or is it D, all of the above? You got your answer? If you guessed all of the above, you have a very, very, very strong bullshit detector. <laughs> Call an ambulance, but not for me. Now, I don't know if he's upset about the concept of renting or buying a property because the property he is currently residing at is also a rental. Maybe he took that personal, but we're going to point out a couple of details. So you can see this wall right here in the background, uh, kind of like, I don't want to say it's like uh, surrounding the entire property. It just kind of surrounds the driveway up until the main entrance. It's so easy when these social media influencers come on social media and talk about stuff, but, and I don't even understand why he decided to input himself into this conversation. That just makes no sense to me because clearly he doesn't know organic all that well. He doesn't know about organics, uh, past behavior of taking advantage of people. He doesn't know any of this stuff. He doesn't know about the different products and services, organic sales. He doesn't know about the terrible collapse in which people have come out and exposed them for. So the guy has a pretty long laundry list. Um, but I don't know that Mike Rashid actually knows all this. I think he just literally just met this guy probably in the last year or so. I think they did a recent collab where he was invited at his studio and they had some kind of conversation about high value man, all that nonsense. Um, but in scrubbing his social media account, we were able to identify the property based on all the different clues and details he's put out on different posts. And it turns out how ironic that the property he currently resides at is actually a rental. So I don't know if he took that personal that we call that organic on the fact that he doesn't own his property. I don't know. It, it sounds like the behavior of someone dating someone that it's, gets so highly upset about it. So this property was last uh, available online for $6,200. Uh, the post was for $6,200. So it could be the price that he's currently renting it for. I'm not going to lie with y'all, you know, being a fake guru is very profitable. I personally tried my hand at being a fake guru once upon a time. Given the CPM, like how much I was getting paid per 1,000 views, dummy, crazy CPM, crazy. Whenever I talked about making money, right, with ClickBank affiliate marketing, dummy. Oh, hold up, nigga, hold up, hold up. I know you got some dirt in your closet too. If you don't tell them, I will. Yo, chill out, okay, I was getting to it, okay, I was getting to it, just chill, just chill. I've made videos on ClickBank in the past pertaining to my experience with the platform and difficulty of making consistent income with affiliate marketing online. It started off with good intentions, just, you know, detailing my journey with it. But after I saw the CPM and the RPM, how much I was getting paid per thousand views, I kind of get lost in the sauce, no cap. Hey, yo, bro, I know there's more you're not telling us. Let it all out. Let it all out. Yo, can you just chill, man? Like, I'm getting to it, okay? Let's, let's chill. <laughs> I've made misleading videos in the past where I've implied results that I've never really achieved myself, whether it be in my thumbnail or in my title. I've never quite achieved these results profitably, right? $100 per day is possible, but is it profitable or not? You know what I'm saying? Did you spend $20 to get $100 or what was it? Are you not ashamed of yourself? Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. In theory, you could make $100 per day by creating YouTube videos and linking people to your ClickBank affiliate link in the description or pinned comment but it'll likely take you three to five years to have those videos rank in search and garner trust from the audience who's watching your videos and hey omo dada now we're getting there now we're getting there but there's one more thing you're not telling people talk about it in the last three years i've made a combined 200 dollars from promoting clickbank products i will say though that in the last year that really narrowed down into my niche focusing on addiction that i saw the increase in income but from one video alone with about 2000 views i made over 300 dollars talking about someone's sales funnel and how he insinuated people can make a thousand dollars per day by buying his clickbank make money online course so if you tally up all the videos where i've talked about clickbank i probably made about 400 dollars talking about clickbank than actually promoting the products ah uh, thank you thank you it's about time you expose yourself as a fake guru and call yourself out on your own bullshit. It seems like rehab is going well, huh? LOL, I suppose. Now you look may or may not be privy to the comment that Michael Shee left on Pocket Watching with JT's channel regarding our video on Mr. Organic's rented house. He says, and I quote, 
I clicked this because I seen my homeboy's name. It's crazy how grown men do videos about other men. This is the most hating ish ever I've ever seen. Organic is getting his bag. Whether he owns or rents this home, it's still impressive. <laughs> Say it, I say it again, you've been had, you've been took, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run amok. So we showed you the post on Instagram. Uh, we showed you the bird's eye view using the mapping. Uh, so this is the advertisement. These are the pictures. Now this property is not owned by him. So I don't know if he, again, I don't know if he's, personally hurt at the fact that people are exposing these content creators, YouTubers for faking it on YouTube and claiming to own things they don't actually own because he happens to be renting this property as well. Who knows? I don't know what his personal motives are, but what's kind of interesting is in looking into this guy's um, personal and professional life, uh, it turns out that the name he goes by on social media is not actually his real name. And what I mean by real name, I mean like his birth name. All right, he has a completely different name and that name is associated with a pretty interesting rap sheet. If you are basically putting this kind of statement out there, you're also contributing uh, into the whole idea that it's okay for organic to go out there and mislead people. That's what I understood from it. That's what I, again, that's what I understood. You, might, you guys might have a different opinion, share it in the comment section, but if you're supporting organic, you might as well support him and him misleading all kinds of people, taking advantage of people, ripping people off, taking money from people. And now he has an NFT and a crypto. Like the first two ventures were massive failures, the mentoring and coaching programs, then the masterclass, which was a disaster. Now, if you're not up to speed, basically Mr. Organic claims he owns a house in Malibu, California. But upon some internet detective research, many outlets have come to find out that he indeed rents it instead. And this is an issue because people are watching his content, buying his merch, possibly paying for a Gargoyle Gang subscription service and possibly buying his books on manifestation and YouTube growth under the perception that he owns these things, the luxury cars, the house, and all the other things that the jewelry you see on him, the drip per se. It's funny how Rashid doesn't see an issue with what Mr. Organic is doing. I'd liken him to those cops, those good cops who stay quiet when they see their counterparts do shady things against the law, all in the name of protecting blue lives, AKA protecting their coworkers' jobs. How do you do that? How do you do that? What the hell is going on? It's funny because Mike seems to recognize the issue with good cops staying silent when bad cops do bad things. But now when you see your friend being called out, there's an issue. Look no further than this post on May 31st, 2020. The only reason we're here is to make sure that you got a voice. That's it. There we go. Don't think for a second. Don't think for a second that he represents who these cops are from all over the county and around this nation. We go out there to help people, not do that nonsense. In the caption, he says, and I quote, I'm with this energy too. I got tons of homies close friends that are in law enforcement. I know most police officers are good men and women doing their best to honor their badge and protect and serve us. But there are evil weeds in their gardens that need to be eradicated. I go to sleep and wake up with what's going on heavy on my heart and mind. It effing hits me deep in my soul. So seeing good officers like this puts a smile on my face. However, there's still problems that need to be addressed. And those other three cowards need to be arrested as well. Basically, in that post, he recognizes the importance of good officers standing up, speaking out, and disassociating themselves from the crooks and the rotten police officers that lurk in law enforcement. I thank God that I was blessed to be a thinking man. I thank my ancestors that I was blessed to be a thinking man because I didn't even know that this was going on. But I figured we'd um, address some mean comments left on those videos about Mr. Organic. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh, yeah, that's what real hating is all about, man. Actually, this one makes sense too, right? RIP Adolph Thornton Jr. says, 
What I don't get is why he wouldn't just flex being able to afford the rent. I mean, let's be honest, most people cannot afford $15,000 a month. That therein is the issue. <laughs> like, why would you lie? Oh, that's right. Because you want more views, more merch sales, and more book sales. That's probably why. I told you. What did I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Cause I told you. Mm-hmm. And when did I tell you? A long time ago. And what did I say will happen when I told you? Exactly what just happened. Someone says him renting the mansion isn't a problem. It's him lying about owning it. But seeing how people are reacting, I see why he would do this. I'm sorry, but even if a man is faking about something or not, I will never ever make a video about it. If I don't know the man personally. Also, he has to have a certain stream of income to afford 15k to 25k a month rental. So kind of weird to act like that's not something. Okay, <laughs> that is not the issue. That is not the issue. Okay, you have an audience. People are watching your content, thinking, hoping that they can achieve your success. But if you have, it's the same as if I told y'all I own the I own the a luxury car, and if you buy my course for ninety nine dollars or nine hundred ninety nine dollars. You can have that luxury car too. And then you find out later that I don't actually own that luxury car. How would you feel? <laughs> I'm calling you out. I'm so sick of these people. You know? Oh! Or better yet, better yet. I, I said this example um, on, on a comment when JT posted this on his Instagram, right? Organic uses the illusion of owning the mansion to not only get more views, but also sell more, sell more merchandise. In addition to selling more of his manifestation and YouTube growth strategy books, this is deceptive marketing. If I told you I became a millionaire by investing in a certain crypto, but then you find out I inherited my wealth, I think Mike would feel deceived as well. Fraud tent creators protecting each other. It's no surprise that he appeared on Fresh and Fit. <laughs> and we know how uh, Mr. Mr. Walter, Wally Walter, is doing right now with his uh, Sugar Daddy Chronicles. <laughs> Roll a clip. The caption says, it's a random guy on the street. Looks like one of your future Sugar Daddies to me. <sighs> that says, she has elite taste in men. The asterisk says, she only fucks ugly guys. Which makes sense because, you know, fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Here's a few of her videos you may or may not have seen. What is the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm gonna do it again. This reads, why did I just hear you fucked another black dude? I mean, you fucked another dude while blacked out. And then she says, I wasn't even that drunk. She's for the streets, she most definitely. His girls think so. Wait, wait, this is recently? Wait, she fucked other niggas on a... Last week you were with this dude. This week you're with this dude. I see everything. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no names, but I will say she's here. Oh, and she's beside Fresh. <laughs> I'm sure y'all saw that video, but her getting exposed for sleeping with a guest on the podcast a week prior to meeting Fresh is comedy. You said something on like last show when I was on. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit alarming. I have to be careful what they want me for. That being yeah. said, this shorty that here, bro. bro. Listen, listen, listen. That shorty there, bro, walk me for me. 100%. All right. you, gotta rock it. What you, want. you said she was very different from every girl you meet in Miami when I've heard you speak about every girl in Miami before. You generalized. Doesn't mean that she's different than not thinking like a Miami girl. Yes. I just pointed you out know, like, someone. Okay. Like, like explain that because I've heard you say. Yeah. So, for example, right? She's not into like designer going crazy, like, oh, I need to have this and that. It's more like, she wants a good time with me. Okay, I don't know why I just got this random link. Miami, Florida. Let's look through. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. 22, still in college. Ooh. <sighs> why do you think she, she's interested in you? Ask her. I was gonna say, can I answer this? Of course. <laughs> um, I feel like the first Merch. day that I met you, having that genuine conversation on the boat. Like, on, a yacht. I, oh, on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> was it 60 foot long? Was it 85 foot? I couldn't even Free tell drink. you. Uh, see, I am a very big personality person. So if he came up to me and he just came and was like, hey, let me get your number, that's a no for me. The fact that he invited me and he's been, in, he invited me out before. Yeah. And it was just the fact that me and my roommate were sitting at home. Yacht. No, me and my roommate were sitting <laughs> at home yacht. and I was like, wow, what are we going to do tonight? And then, like, at that moment, he texted me and he was, was like, he hey, go do you ride guys... with scooters or get on the yacht? Let's talk about it. And 
he's right. I'm not a materialistic person at all. I could be if I wanted to. I don't care about that shit. Like, my dream car is a fucking Honda Civic. Like, I don't. There's nothing about me materialistic. Hold on, who said he invited you out before? Why you didn't go before? Hold on, hold on. I was always hold busy, on. or like, I was pretty near that. Hold on, hold on. I was living. Hold on, wait, wait. No. You see what your problem is? You think that because I have clout, everyone wants me for clout. However, for you, that's that's true. For me, it's not. I actually have game, bro, right? That being said, hold on. That being said, right, bro? Okay. Your experience, right, with girls is tainted because you want to see it for clout. Oh. That's what he said, bro. Want me for me. There's some horrors in this house. 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 I said certified freak. Seven days a week. Wait, ass P word. Make that pull out game week. Yeah, 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 yeah. You up with some wet ass P word. Bring it. Y'all laughing, but even if he's renting, that's a lot of bread for the house. And then the cars and bills on top of it. You know what? You got a point. But is this not the same reason why we clown rappers? and athletes for falling off when they're no longer making the same amount of money. I feel like people think, oh, because someone's making X amount of dollars, that will be their income forever. <laughs> YouTube could change something in the algorithm or whatever. And next thing you know, you're not getting as many views. You mismanage your money. And now what? You can't afford that house anymore. And this is why you have all these million dollar houses that no one, that uh, millionaires or celebrities, right? They can't sell. Because you bought such a big house, your overall demographic or buying market is smaller. A $500,000 house is going to warrant a greater buying market than a $2.5 million house. Somebody ain't doing the math right. Somebody ain't doing the math right. I started watching your content when you first started out and really enjoyed your perspectives and demeanor. I don't know what to say about what you are putting out now. Nothing here is educating me about accounting or finances. What are you doing, brother? Not the way I want to see an educated man who represents HBCU graduate conduct himself. A bunch of sniggering and laughing about nothing in the big scheme of things. Get back to being a professional. Wake up! You should recognize the references here. Just saying. I think the point is you are learning how to identify and do some background research on people who make income claims or property claims online. Even the idea of testimonials on YouTube or testimonials on a landing page, right? Let's try it with Thomas Few. Okay, right click, search image with Google Lens. Let's fix that real quick. Right here, baby, right here. We have Derek Williams. We have Tom Few, we have, I don't know, Bianca Coates, James Jones. Who else do we have? Tim Russell. There is no consensus image, or name, I should say, for this image. Why is that? With over 7,000 students? Now, sounds kind of fishy to me. If you watch my other video on Terry Ijeoma, Trade and Travel, you'll realize that if you right-click on the image, search the image on Google Lens or Google Search, you'll see that the image might be associated with different names. And now you are understanding that that is a fake image, that is a fake testimonial. That is the point, I would think. <laughs> Someone says, never watch another man's pockets. The comment underneath that. Don't advertise your pockets, it's that simple. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> nigga, you gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Real talk. You gotta be ashamed of yourself. All as you is. You don't want you don't want us to pocket watch you, but you're showing us your house. You're showing us your cars. You're showing us your lifestyle. If you don't want nobody to pocket watch you, do not be online whatsoever. <laughs> okay? Don't be online whatsoever. Make your money. Oh, sorry, I forgot. He makes his money from social media. Therein lies the issue. Let's say I'm flashy and I buy an estate. Y'all gonna say I'm fake too? Nah, not necessarily, unless you are teaching people, <laughs> right? You're selling your course for $1,000 and telling people, if you follow my one, two, three, four, five step formula, you can achieve the same success without disclosing, you know, your own competitive advantage that led you to buy that mansion, right? It's one thing, like, think of, y'all think about this, bro, okay? Think about this. One step, one second, all the great athletes, ever right even let's even talk about lebron james and his son Bronny james 
LeBron was a number one ranked recruit coming out of high school, right? His son Bronny is, depending on what way you look at or what platform you look at, he's ranked 30th. Why isn't Bronny ranked number one? His father is was, was is arguably you could say top three basketball players of all time. Why couldn't he? Why couldn't his father translate all the accol accolades and, and success and genes and all of the above nutrition, best training facility, best coaches, best school to his son and make his son rank the number one recruit in his graduating class? Oh, let's, let's not even forget Michael Jordan. Neither of Michael Jordan's sons made it to the NBA. <laughs> Neither of them made it to the NBA. <laughs> so the whole business of teaching success is flawed. If you are teaching people how to do X, Y, Z and charging an absurd amount, at some point, it only makes sense that people will question your teaching methods and how successful your students actually are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this one, this guy says, your channel has less than 50K but Mr. Organic's page has 300k plus and his homie has 600k plus. I guess that's, got, that's referring to tall guy reviews. Y'all are both YouTubers, but he has more followers and you both are cackling like schoolgirls trying to hate on a person doing better on his YouTube channel than on your YouTube channel. You should be bigging the man up and taking notes. People do not like the hatred you spread. Mr. Organic's show is entertaining. What do you two have to offer? <laughs> so basically we're saying the more clout you have the more the more credible you are now is that a metric of credibility I am a clown I am a clown, clown. you realize you can buy social proof right you can buy you can buy followers you can buy subscribers you can buy views you can you can pay to be on Forbes you can pay to be on Business, Business Insider. You can pay to be on Huffington Post. Is social media clout? Does that directly equate to credibility? Hey man, all I'm gonna say is question everybody, question anything that they say and do. Myself, you know, y'all gonna question me, give me criticisms. It's all good. Hopefully we all are able to sharpen each other, you know, iron sharpen iron and get a better understanding of marketing, income claims and fake gurus in general, you know, especially when you have people who benefit from keeping silent, people who benefit from not speaking out against their friends who are doing shady things, fake gurus protecting other fake gurus, right? Where's their feather flock together? I'm a rapper, <laughs> no cap. <laughs> But for those who are critics of Pocket Watch and JT and myself, right? Uh, here's a fake guru that we both talked about, a white fake guru that we both discussed, who is teaching us how to make thousands of dollars day trading. Watch that video right here, or watch my other video right here on another white fake guru, <laughs> the Mickelson twins. Actually, two, two. I got two for one special. The Mickelson twins who will teach you how to make six figures publishing audiobooks on Audible aka Amazon. Watch that video as well. But as always, if it doesn't feed you, don't water it. And too much of any good thing is good for nothing. How are you lot doing today? Say it with me. I am doing more, saying less, and keeping that same energy. No cap. Flip the script. I'm out. Deuces. Bow. We know the truth don't lie to us. We're rolling through so scandalous. She got the thing that I might just touch. Yeah, I might just touch. I got the might just touch. Yeah, we know the truth don't lie to us. We're rolling through so scandalous. She got the thing that I might just touch. Yeah, I might just touch. I got the might just touch. Yeah, so scandalous. I see them brothers over there. They can't hang with us.